In this tutorial we'll be looking at extracting environment maps from Nuke 3D scene. In particular we'll talk about spherical maps, also called lat longs, and cubic maps, also called six packs. Let's have a look at our 3D scene first. This is a full 360 pen and tile set and all the setup lives inside the group too, so let's have a quick peek at that and you'll see that the whole thing pretty much consists of cards. So now let's say you have this environment just home into it and pen around. So you have this whole thing, but now you need to go ahead and retouch the shadow. You need to fill in the gaps at the bottom and the top that we missed when we shot it. And maybe you want to use the whole setup to actually light your CG. So you need to extract a spherical map to use as a lighting probe. The easiest way to do this is to attach a scanline render node and flick it into spherical mode like so. This will output a spherical map However, be aware that in this mode the scanline render node needs to actually load all those tiles at the same time to be able to process a single scanline. So this can be very memory intensive and um, computationally heavy. However, if you do have a machine that uh, can cope with that sort of stuff, make sure you render a 2 to 1 image aspect because a spherical map covers a 360 range, 360 degrees, horizontally and 180 degrees vertically. So you want to make sure you're running a 2 to 1 image aspect render. And the way I usually do it is by simply attaching a reformat node to the background pipe. You can use any node that pr produces or has a format. And um, if you have a format set up, you just simply go and choose it. I don't at the moment, so what I usually do, because I don't like setting up formats if I don't have to, I just uh, flick the whole thing into box mode hit the force to shape button and then I can punch in an arbitrary resolution. So let's go for 800 by 400 pixels as our render resolution. And uh, in order to not bore you with the rendering process, I've done this already here. So let's have a look at the output. This is what it looks like. We get 360 coverage horizontally and 180 degrees vertically. And now we can go ahead and retouch those black areas or simply put it on a sphere to use in our scene as a single texture map rather than millions of tiles. So if you do want to put this back onto a 3D sphere, either a Nuke or Maya or any other 3D software, you should be able to simply use the sphere's native UV space, which means you just plug it straight into the sphere. However, usually a sphere's UV space assumes that you're looking at the outside of the ball, like so, but we're really inside of the bubble looking out. And because of that, we need to mirror the texture map first. So I pin the mirror node, switch on the horizontal checkbox, and uh, now we've got what we had before, except we have a single piece of geometry and a single texture to deal with. So if we just quickly compare what we have now to the original pen and tile setup, which is here, you can see that everything lives in the same spot. And if we go inside, oops, let me clear out the bin so we don't see the other geometry anymore. So now we can uh, flick between tile set and sphere. You can see the resolution hit, um, which we introduced through rendering to a discrete resolution. Obviously, you have to commit to some sort of resolution up here. That's one of the downsides of using a lat long. Um, the other downside of this is actually that the scanline render node produces so-called vortexing at the poles. So you, you see a black artifact at the top and you can also see a similar kind of artifact at the bottom here. Unfortunately, that's a limitation of the scanline render node at the moment. Usually you can adjust the tessellation max to kind of get around that, but that gets really, really slow very quickly and you'll never get rid of it entirely. So let's have a look at an alternative way of creating this. 